Hello everybody and welcome to this video. We are taking a look at Void Terrarium this time around. This is a game that I've really enjoyed. It has taken me a while to get to it. Um, with Sony and Nintendo releasing such high profile games over the last couple of weeks. I have been focused on those, but this dropped about a week and a half ago I think. And I have been playing it in the background. I really love it. This video will show you a couple of minutes of gameplay from early on. I really wanted to show you that just so you um, you know what to expect going in, but once you get into it, the whole game basically runs in the same way throughout. So you uh, you will know what you're getting when you finish watching this video. And I wanted to also use the video to have a chat about the roguelike genre as a thing. The game itself I'll go into much more in depth with with the review on digitallydownloaded.net, and I certainly encourage you to check that out. Um, but in terms of roguelikes, let's talk about those. So, roguelike is a term that has become very much overused, <laughs> uh, especially in the indie space. I think we all know that every second indie game is trying to be roguelike in one way or another, and to be honest, I used to be a huge fan of the roguelike genre to the point that if it had that word in it, I would pick the game up based on that reason alone. I really do love the roguelike, uh, have been playing roguelike since I was a kid, so the genre has a resonance with me. But it was just it has become so overused and so mixed up with a whole bunch of other things that the the roguelike itself has almost lost meaning basically it seems to be used these days to describe any game that has random elements to it but that's not really what a roguelike is void terrarium thank goodness is a proper roguelike in the same mold as mystery dungeon and if you've got a nintendo switch i reviewed this on switch if you've got a nintendo switch there are a lot of roguelikes already available on it. Two that spring to mind immediately are Chocobo Mystery Dungeon and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. There's also a Sheeran the Wanderer on its way, which is kind of the uh, the grandfather of the Mystery Dungeon roguelike genre. So there are quite a few of them. Uh, what differentiates them is the aesthetics um, and also the, the narrative context of them. So obviously Chocobo Mystery Dungeon has different aesthetics and different storytelling than Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. But none of these games are particularly heavily story focused either. And that's really, that plays to the strengths of the development team behind Void Terrarium because if you have played A Rose in the Twilight or The Firefly Diary, and hopefully you have on uh, PlayStation Vita, they might be on PC as well, I'm not sure, but they're really clever little puzzle platformers. Um, but they're games that don't use a whole lot of explicit narrative to get their message across either. They're very emotive and very emotional in terms of their design elements. And they they really work hard to make you feel for the characters and then tend to do things to those characters which are less than pleasant. They're quite adult games in terms of tone, even though they look quite cutesy. Void Terrarium is very much in the, that mold. So the game starts where you play as Robbie, which is this little robot that you're seeing me play as here. He's this cute little guy that has two little light bulbs for ears and he looks a little bit like a rabbit so he has that kind of innocent era aura about him and he discovers a human which is really weird because this game takes place well after an apocalypse where humanity has completely died out what happened was there was some kind of plague which started to kill people and they started to dig under the ground to try to escape that but unfortunately that didn't go so well for them either and all kinds of natural disasters happened, the plague got in anyway and there was nobody left. But Robbie here comes across this one girl who's living in a terrarium and the for people who don't know what terrarium is, it's basically like a, a glass jar. She's living in a very, very, very large one. But it's broken and her life is at stake. So Robbie decides to help her because they form this kind of really lovely bond pretty much immediately. They can't talk to each other, she's mute, and Robbie can't talk either. But he has this desire to look after her, so he fixes her terrarium, he starts to put some creature comforts in there, but to get the materials to do all of that he has to go into the dungeons to collect resources. And that's really the loop of the game. You go into the dungeons, you collect the resources, you use them to build beds and things and make the uh, the girl's life as comfortable as possible. And the, in terms of explicit storytelling, there's not that much to Void Terrarium. It, it doesn't have long cutscenes, for example. Once you're in the dungeons, there's no real storytelling elements. Um, the the storytelling elements, when they come, 
come once you come out of the dungeon again but those are, are again quite short most of the storytelling occurs where Robbie meets another robot um, or at least a, a computer screen and that computer screen admits that he's the reason that humanity has uh, been wiped out and that immediately sets up the kind of the mystery of the game as well because you don't know what's really happened to humanity you you've woken up quite late and quite naive about it and the game says that your memory banks as a robot have been wiped so you have no idea what's actually happened and there's that voyage of discovery in working out you know what's happened to humanity and uh, what the kind of the far-reaching implications of that are and this game does have some very dark themes that it kind of explores and uh, I, I guess it does that against the context of a very cute and very sweet little relationship between Robbie and the girl so for example you you immediately feel connected to them because she needs to eat but she can't leave the, ter the, the terrarium so he goes and finds really gross looking bugs but that's basically the only thing that he can find he brings this bug back to her and she munches down on it and the animation of her eating is really sweet and affecting and immediately you do feel very protective of both Robbie and the girl and you want to know their story and that's really the strength of this developer Rose in the Twilight, Firefly Diary and this one they're all quite different in terms of gameplay structure and whatever but their emotive core is very similar and it's a, it's a really compelling thing it is kind of unique to this developer so I definitely recommend if you haven't played any of these games before you just try one just to see what they're like because yeah there's there's nothing quite like their ability to to create emotion now in terms of games that you may have played that might have some kind of similar emotive appeal there was a Wii game and it was then released on uh, Wii U as well called Pandora's Tower which is a JRPG that plays a little bit like Castlevania so it doesn't play the same way as this game but it has that similar thing where you need to go out and find food for a character that <clears throat> that needs you to protect her and there is an emotive um, connection in the way that they eat and the way that they kind of survive in what is a very hostile world and they're so kind of reliant on you which is which is a it's sweet it's it's um it's a little bit like we've seen plenty of other stories in recent years of father-son or father-daughter relationships for especially in the kind of the big blockbuster area but yeah this one is two people who aren't necessarily related but form this connection by it's really kind of out of loneliness and I think that's maybe a term I should have used earlier melancholia really comes through in this game it's a very melancholic kind of uh, experience so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video do read my full review for my full thoughts Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos and please do consider backing me on Patreon because that will let me expand what I'm doing and uh, you know explore new ideas as well. So thanks as always. We will see you at the next one and have a great weekend. It is Friday as I record this. So have a great weekend everybody. Hope it's a good one and we'll see you next time.